Everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about The Flash by Jeff Johns, Volume 1. Hey everybody, and welcome back to BK's Bullets. As always, I'm your host, Brent Casina, and today we're talking about The Flash. This is The Flash by Jeff Johns, Volume 1. Uh, this collects The Flash, 19, or 1964. <laughs> 164 through 176, so what, 12 or 13 issues there, plus The Flash, Iron Heights, graphic novel by Jeff Johns and Ethan Van Skyver. So the artists in here, you got Angel Unzetta doing the first six issues here with this Wonderland story. That's kind of interesting. And then you switch over to Scott Collins, who is just amazing. This is the Scott Collins I remember and love, um, not the stuff he was doing on Blue Beetle. And then you follow that up with Ethan Van Skyver making his... Not his debut, but the thing that put him on the map in the early 2000s, uh, which was this Iron Heights graphic novel with his super detailed renderings and backgrounds and character designs and the whole, the whole thing. You're hearing my little puppy there, by the way. Uh, that's the bell. <clears throat> anyway, okay, so Jeff Johns, I've read his um, Green Lantern stuff. I've read his Justice League stuff. I've read a lot of his stuff. I have never read his Flash stuff. So this is my first time reading his Flash run. Uh, I think I did read, I read everything he did with the Flash with Blackest Night and Rebirth, basically, and post-Rebirth, so the lead up to Flashpoint, I read that. Um, but I haven't read any of the stuff with Wally, I've read all the stuff with Barry, so this was a very interesting read. Um, the first six issues is this Wonderland story, and I think that's kind of like, you could take it or leave it. You know, honestly, I feel like you could skip it, honestly. Um, it's Angel Unzetta doing the art, and he's not bad. It's just it doesn't jive with the rest of what I know is going to be, um, you know, Scott Collins knocking down the park, and then Howard Porter taking over later on, and then Francis Manipole and some other great artists as well. So Angel Unzetta here is just like it's just a stylistic shift uh, in terms of tone and rendering and everything else from here. Feels very late '90s, that kind of thing into where you get to Scott Collins um, a couple issues, like six issues later, and he's doing this very new age, 2000s, you know, almost inkless, shadowless approach where you're relying a lot on coloring and things like that to give you your shadows and depth and effect. But everything he's doing here is a lot of heavy line work also that is, um, I know the dog is scratching, um, but the, the line work here is just so expressive that I'm not missing the over-rendered shadows of, you know, Jim Lee or like a Howard Porter comes in later on and does his thing um, post-JLA. And then you wrap up with Ethan Van Skyver. And you, we know Van Skyver, love him or hate him with his politics. I did like his art at here. Um, I really did like his art. It's it's good. It's a little bit rough. Like I remember reading his trail, trail of the gun or trial of the gun with his Catwoman, Batman two-parter a long time ago. And that I think happened before this. Uh, and no sense. He wrote that. Um, and so then he does this. And then from here, I believe he does, I don't know if he jumps right into Green Lantern Rebirth or a little bit later, but Green Lantern Rebirth is when I first took notice of him. Um, and then from there he goes on and does a little Superman, Batman stint and then jumps over to, I believe it was Flash Rebirth, kind of after that. Um, so not a whole load of stuff that he's done. But the stuff he did do, I, I do appreciate um, when, you know, before he got all hateful and political and clickbaity. So that's that. Um, but yeah, I think it was a fun story. I think this, this volume really kicks into gear when Scott Collins takes over in the art and you really get to know uh, the cast of what will probably be the run of The Flash. Um, everything before then is just Flash in a mirror verse with, you know, and Linda and the rogues, not really the rogues, but Mirror Master and Captain Cold. And from there, you're just kind of like, I don't really understand where this is going. And then all of a sudden, when we get to the first Scott Collins issue, which is this one with Magenta, beautiful covers by Brian Boland in this volume also. Um, that's when you get to know the supporting cast. You get to know the co beat cops that are working in the Central City. Uh, you get to know the lead detective, Captain Singh, all these guys. Um, you know, Linda becomes a character when Scott Collins takes over. So now that we're back in Keystone City, not Central City, 
um, we're getting to know the supporting cast and things about Wally's past and that's like things like that and it gets more interesting you have Cicada in here who I remember they dragged out a whole season of the Flash TV show with that villain I think um, and here is like three issues uh, and I don't know if he'll ever be seen again but I, I was just fun like going like oh, wait I know that like motif with this lightning knife what what is that what's this guy's name and they're like Cicada I'm like this makes no sense why it's called Cicada but maybe they get into, into that later if he reappears um, the top not the top. Weather Wizard story here. The last two issues before we jump to the Iron Heights um, storyline was really cool, really good. Made Weather Wizard um, actual an actual threat. His costume gets redesigned, um, and it's a little it's a little funny to go from this redesign to then like the next issue with Iron Heights. They throw Weather Wizard in Iron Heights, and they make, like he's in his old costume. Uh, you can barely see it here. But they make a point on this page of the warden being like, yeah, well, we threw in your old costume here just for shits and giggles when clearly, like, you know, I'm assuming Ethan Van Skyver worked on this artwork a long time before this actually came out and had him in his old costume and didn't know that he was getting a redesign and they didn't redraw the pages. Therefore, there's just a little bit of dialogue here saying, yes, we purposefully put you in your old costume just so readers like me who are reading this in trade or maybe reading it at the time, you know, chronologically picking up these single issues would not be like, hey, what the, what's the deal? He's out of the wrong costume. Like, no, here's a bit of dialogue to kind of explain it. Um, I'm assuming they were working on it a long time before, you know, or simultaneously as these issues of The Flash were coming out. But what's also fun in here is you get a lot of new villains. Um, and I know they're new because they point out on the cover, like, new villain, Tar Pit. Um, I think Girder makes his first appearance here in uh, the Iron Heights volume. So lots of fun stuff in here. I'm, I'm excited to read the rest of um, The Flash by Jeff Johns. There are six volumes right there above my head. Um, so we're going to go through them over the summer into the fall here. And it, they'll be as fast as they'll be. You know, if they're really good, we'll probably read them a lot faster than if they start getting a little slogged. But apparently this is a very, very good run of The Flash um, I haven't read Mark Wade's, um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm getting more into the Flash here. And with the Flash movie, it's no better time to start reading Flash. Uh, there's lots of cool places you can jump on. This is a great book. You can start here if you can find them. I think they're a little bit out of print, but you might be able to find one or two here in your local comic shop and then go to a different one and find the other two, you know, or find them on online retailers. Maybe you'll find one or two here. So you have to probably piece them together from different places. That's what I had to do, I think, with some of these. Um, but yeah, I think this is a, a good thing. They're also, you know, all these are all digital anyway, so you could pick them up there also. Uh, other Flash places to read, uh, gosh, uh, my favorite so far, the Williamson run. I only have the one trade, but I read it all digitally, issue by issue as it was coming out. So eventually probably I'll collect those. Although again, they might be going out of print, so that'd be a hard hunt. It's just, it's so weird to read things digitally and then be like oh maybe i should pick that up and by the time you figure that out when the run is over stuff is hard to find again um so yeah that's a little fun little tidbit but yeah flash is fun this one is fun go read it again the wonderland stuff is fun it's a weird alternate universe storyline but it doesn't matter if you don't like that once you get to the scott collins stuff i guarantee you you'll be in like flint uh and just enjoying every single page and the scott collins art here like I get why people don't like his current stuff now, but this stuff I, I think is flawless. Like it's classic comic books. It's got a retro style. And I think that works with a character like the flash. Um, and it, it was probably like a really new bold look of that time. Cause everything in the two thousands was like very Brian Hitchy, you know, think of that period or um, you had the ultimate line and things like that. So this is a very different style uh, of art and coloring. And it just brings a lot of whimsy and fun to the Flash, and I think that the Flash needs a little bit of that with his character. So, Jeff Johns, kicking it off right, book one of The Flash by Jeff Johns. Let me know what you guys think of this run. What am I in for? Am I in for a treat? Let me know down in the comments below. We will see you guys next time in the funny pages.